Hello guys, welcome to the first actual devlog for my voxel ray tracing engine. If this is your first time seeing this project, I recommend you watch my last video, which covers the first three months of progress I made. Over these past two months, the major features I have added to this project include a streaming system, dynamic map editing, and the loading of models from Magic of Voxel. Okay, so the way that the streaming system works is that every single frame when we render the voxels to the screen, we make a note of which voxels are visible to the camera. So in this hypothetical example, in 2D, not 3D, all of these voxels here, these four, are visible to the camera. Now we need a way to load in these two red voxels here that are unloaded so that the uh, camera knows what color they should be. So, in order to make space for these, because we have a fixed um, size, we don't want to have we don't want to load in every voxel. So we want to remove voxels that aren't visible. So we'll load in these two voxels, and in order to make space for them, we will unload these two voxels up here, which the camera can no longer see. In this way. We have the same number of voxels loaded in as before, but now um, the camera was able to move so that it can see all of them. So now we only have four voxels loaded in despite having all of these voxels that exist in the map. This saves a lot of space. The first thing I did before starting to implement streaming was to create a much larger test scene. This scene is 240 by 240 by 240 voxels, and right now every single one of them is being stored on the GPU, which is very memory inefficient as the vast majority of them are either empty or occluded. So I got right to work, and encountered a lot of bugs with the memory. Here are some of the best of them. And it finally works. The scene looks exactly the same as when we started, albeit without the lighting, but only the voxels that are visible to the camera are currently loaded in. If I pause the streaming and move around, you can see which voxels are loaded in and which are not. Once I unpause the streaming again, everything gets loaded in. Before, around 13 million voxels were being stored in memory. Now it's been reduced to just about 1 million. Next up is dynamic map editing. The first step in this process was to implement a raycaster on the CPU. As you can see here, the CPU is now able to step array through the map and determine where it hits, which will soon allow me to place voxels CPU side. Next was to actually upload the changes to the GPU so that they can be rendered. This was pretty trivial thanks to the work I did with the streaming system. Now we can freely edit the map. The 
next thing I added was functionality for loading models from Magic of Voxel, which is a voxel art creation software. The issue, however, is that the models loaded from Magic of Voxel do not have any normals, meaning that I can't tell which direction they face for lighting calculation. So, I set out to generate the normals myself. As you can see, the normals on this tree are generated dynamically and allow for smooth looking lighting. The final thing I worked on during the last two months was a total refactor of all the CPU side code. Previously, I was only able to have one voxel map at a time, which can be pretty restrictive for games where you have to change maps frequently. Now, you're able to have any number of maps you want and switch between them freely. You can also choose per map whether you want the voxels to be streamed in as I developed earlier, or to have them all loaded in at once for better performance. And before I go, here's one more cool looking bug I encountered during the refactor. See you next time.